Hey, buddies! Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome back to Let's Play Rome. Real quick, I want, I want to apologize for how short the last two episodes were. They were actually like multiple hours of footage, but I only really ended up with like a few minutes of usable footage in those videos. But in this video, we will be trying to conquer basically the rest of the world. So this should be a fairly long one, which will be obvious by the timeline. I think it's time that we researched combined arms to get access to uranium. Just finished the military academy in Pasqua. And I think now is the time to go for the aerodrome district so we can start producing biplanes. We'll also want to pick up advanced flight fairly soon to be able to produce bombers. Let's begin the bombardment of Niani. I have in range three catapults, but I also need to make sure that I have my great general in range. Sorry, catapults. These are artillery. <laughs> catapults. Oh my god. You hear me? But that means we'll be able to rip this city to shreds uh, pretty quickly. I mean, just look how much damage this tank does to the city. Of course, Macedonia is swinging in here with some annoying units to make my life even harder. Um, we're also working on Audgust. We'll take that in a couple of turns. Actually, I was wrong about taking it in a couple of turns because I have two uh, infantry here who pretty much just killed that city. If I could get another one in range or even like a cavalry or something, um, I might be able to take it this turn. And yeah, I think I can. Boom. Just grab that city like that. We will, of course, keep it. And then use the city bombards to uh, help out get rid of these uh, cuirassiers. Thanks to my railroads, I'm actually able to get this tank all the way over to Niani to kill it this turn. That's absurd. I wasn't even expecting to take this city this turn. But I did say at the end of the last video that we're in full Blitzkrieg mode and we should be able to take two to three cities every turn or two. I don't remember capturing this settler, but apparently I have a settler. Time for Gao to get bombarded. It should be a simple kill as well, thanks to this infantry in position right here. One thing I do need to be careful about is I'm using a lot of oil right now and my, my army is going to grind to a halt if I don't get that under control. Part of getting that under control is going to be combining units together because Infantry armies only use a single point of oil, even though it's technically three infantry units. The nice thing is we captured the Patala Palace, and that means we have an extra diplomatic policy slot. So I'll go ahead and plug in gunboat diplomacy. Unfortunately, I also think it's time that we retire El Cid, so I'll use him to turn this tank into a tank core. And then once I finish another tank, I'll be able to combine them together to have my third tank army. I am producing another two tank armies over here in the eastern half of my empire and they'll be rejoining the front line here in a bit. Beautiful, there's combined arms giving me access to destroyers, aircraft carriers and uranium. We also picked up Cold War which upgrades a few of our cards, gives us access to another spy and also makes our nuclear devices cheaper to maintain. Also, I found a little bit of oil up here to the north, which will really help out with my oil problem. And so I think I'm going to try and get that settler that I stole up there to settle that oil. Speaking of uranium, by the way, we've got six per turn already. One is over here in Durocortorum. I'll need to get that improved by a builder soon. I actually settled Ostia on some uranium, which is pretty nice. And Lugdunum as well got settled on uranium. Wow, I got really, really lucky. There is another chunk of uranium over here. I'll need a settler to pick that one up because there are no cities in range to pick it up. And that should give me access to four sources of uranium which means I'll be able to spam out a lot of nuclear weapons. Of course before I can get nuclear weapons I'm gonna need to unlock bombers. Todd Denny is flipping independent but I'll still want to capture it if I can because it's standing in the way of my attack on Macedon. So to that end, let's go ahead and bring our artillery to bear upon the city. I want to try to move carefully so I don't use up all the movement on my artillery because I'll need every single one of them to be able to attack this turn. And this is the power of giving extra movement through logistics uh, to be able to allow you to move your artillery and attack on the same turn, as well as getting extra combat bonuses on them, because you can just rip down cities every single turn. And uh, I have a train of military engineers who are going to be spamming out railroads to also keep up my mobility. You throw in a supply convoy as well, and each of these artillery armies have five movement. That's from a combination of logistics, a great general of the appropriate era, and a supply convoy, meaning that these artillery armies move around like their cavalry. Nice, we just got some era score from winning an emergency. Considering that the Mali Empire is the only remaining member of that <laughs> emergency, I think it was a pretty easy win. We've also inherited enough uh, theater squares from war that we got a great rider. Probably not the most useful thing in the world, but an extra couple of bits of culture isn't too bad. Oh yes, we just finished our very first observation balloon. The observation balloon is one of the last pieces of the puzzle to make this artillery swarm literally unstoppable because they'll be able to attack cities from three tiles away. Just clearing out a few of the remaining units that are in my way before my artillery swarm descends upon Kumbi Saleh. Oh my god. Oh my 
God, this city is so weak that I only need one single artillery shot to completely erase the walls and then one extra artillery shot to bring it down low enough for my tank army to take it this turn. That's absurdly powerful. I'm also gonna let this uh, last Malian city flip independent on of its own, so I don't take the grievance penalty from killing another Civ. I don't think I actually need the error score that you get from killing a Civ to get a Golden Age, so I'm perfectly happy with this. <laughs> Thanks for the free settler. Oh my god, I can't believe I was just handed the free settler that I need to take this uranium. Looks like the Mali want peace, and I'm gonna accept this deal for all this gold. I just picked up conservation, which is important for three reasons. First of all, it gives me access to resource management, which means I can have much larger armies because I'll have plenty of aluminum and oil. It also allows me to build naturalists, and these guys are great because national parks actually give you amenities, uh, four amenities, one for each city. I think it's the four closest cities get an amenity. And so this will just be a great way to use my faith to actually get amenities to keep my empire more stable. It also gives me a few envoys, as well as the ability to plant woods. That planting woods ability is going to be useful for when I want to throw down more neighborhoods with public transport to pick up more gold. Let's go ahead and plug in resource management so that we can get plenty of oil and aluminum. And we're also going to get to work on rapid deployment, which will give me access to the ability to transport units between my aerodromes, as well as a 25% increase in the combat experience that all my units get. Looks like Samori Ture is ready to join my empire. He is a modern era great general who will provide boosts to my atomic era land units. Currently don't really have any atomic era units, but being able to boost up things like tanks and artillery is always well. Welcome. Let's grab suzerainty of Cardiff. Not that I need it, just that I'll get a little bit of value from it. I have another three envoys to play around with and it's probably best that I plug them into something I already own that I can get value out of. Like for example, if I throw another two into Brussels, I'll get plus three production on my power plant buildings. Let's settle the uranium city. This city will never be really useful. Uh, it mostly exists to collect that strategic resource for me. So I'll just kind of let it do whatever it wants. Let's get rid of this encampment because it's blocking my way to actually attack Alexandria by the Latmus. All right, let's get our shots in on the city. Boom, boom. Gonna spend a little bit of my cash on traders here. I have like another 10 trade routes that I need to fill out. James Watt is easily one of the best great engineers in the game, especially if you have access to the Mausoleum at Halicarnassus. A flat plus two production to all of your factories, especially in a big empire, is a massive amount of value. Let's rip down these walls. I'm also gonna take a little bit of time on my artillery to actually get promotions as well, because that's an important part of uh, increasing their power level, because they have a couple of promotions that make them really good at attacking cities. Now you get to witness the power of the observation balloon. This artillery is three tiles away from my guy, and I can go ahead and start to smash its walls down. My railroads are starting to already reach into the realm of my opponent. I'm gonna to need to start defending these uh, these engineers actually, because they're gonna be pretty vulnerable to enemy cavalry. It's probably also a good idea to run through and keep pillaging so I can keep my gold income flowing. Taking a moment to look at my power grid, looks like most of my empire is covered by power. There's a couple of bits to the north that aren't, as well as newly conquered lands that aren't fully powered, but we'll get to work on that. Beautiful, we just picked up radio, giving me access to aluminum that's going to be what we use to actually build our aeroplanes and I just realized that I actually haven't found Alexander's capital I assume it's somewhere here there's Pella right so this is our main objective for this war then it's a simple matter of finding Nubia's capital over here and then swinging up and nuking Korea speaking of nuking let's get to work on nuclear fission I go ahead and drop down the national park and get ourselves some four era score which will guarantee us a golden age I have all seven or six of my artillery in range of I guy um, it'll only take a few of their shots to kill it. So again, I'm going to focus on promoting because once I have enough promotions, I'll actually be able to split these artillery up into different battle groups and uh, be able to rip down cities that way. But there's another city under our belt. It's going to cause us some loyalty issues in the short term, but it gets us a step closer to taking out Alexander. It's also important to consider when you're this close to winning, just go ahead and do random training. Encampments are great because they give you gold and great general points, but I don't really have anything else useful to build in this city, so if I can just convert its production into gold and then tell the city to focus on gold, uh, it'll actually work these, and then I just have to lock in enough food to where it doesn't starve and we'll be fine, because I actually don't need the city's production. I just want gold to be able to sustain my army. Let's also plug in free market for the extra little bit of gold from that. This city doesn't have any defenses, so I should be able to hit it pretty hard with infantry, 
and uh, a single tank to take it out this turn without actually needing to use my artillery. Now I do think it's time to split my army into uh, two battle groups of three artillery. Uh, I won't be able to make as much progress per turn, but I should be perfectly able to make reasonable progress, progress with each independent battle group. So I'll send three over here to try to deal with Pella, and we'll make fairly good progress on the first turn. Uh, I'll even attack the city a little bit. I want to make sure that I do some pillaging too. Uh, if, as long as it makes sense to do the pillaging, right? And uh, we'll see the city fall next turn. Then I'll purchase myself a second observation balloon and start with another battle group down in the south. Actually, I had some spare infantry around Pella, so I will be able to take it this turn. Just have to use this cavalry and get him, get his hands dirty, so to speak. But that's uh, Alexander's capital. Technically, we could piece him out right here. However, we are negative loyalty, so we're going to want to capture a few cities around here. We've also picked up a bit of uranium thanks to that. I'm pretty sure I actually have a monopoly on the world's uranium supply once I conquer Alexander, because there's three more in here. Another national park in Quebec City for the amenities and the era score as well. I've also decided to start an inquisition to start clearing out enemy religions. I get pretty good value from spreading my religion in the form of gold, and I have a ton of faith that I'm just sitting on not using. So I figured I may as well go ahead and spread my religion around the world. Let's get another copy of Uranium online. These tiles are actually incredibly powerful. Two food, six production. Basically unstoppable thanks to the sheer power of artillery. And uh, even Kazir Ibrim uh, could fall this turn if I can get enough power uh, adjacent to it in the form of tanks. Looks like I might just be short of killing it, which tells me I might need another tank unit. Unless I can pull one down from the north. There we go, right? Kazir Ibrim is mine. Perfect. And now I need to start cutting my way to the north to take on Korea. Let's get the Northern Artillery Battle Group into position against Alexandria Troas. And uh, really the only thing limiting me um, in terms of how quickly I can take cities kind of feels like it's the health of my units, like the health of my melee units. Because I can pretty much just throw them at cities relentlessly. Um, at this point in the game without any fear like I've even taken this city down to half health already and these guys actually have second attack so it might even be worth my while oh my god it is worth my while I'm, this is ridiculous I've, I don't think I've actually snowballed this hard in a game before genuinely new territory for me to experience right now usually I kind of faff about but this game I really really went for it trying to be as efficient as possible and I probably could have won this even faster if I wasn't faffing about, like, settling. If I had gone for Warlord's Throne instead of the Audience Chamber, because I went for the Audience Chamber to show you guys how it works, or Ancestral Hall, rather, uh, to show how the settling thing works really, really well with Rome. But if I had gone for Warlord's, uh, Warlord's Throne, I could have easily, easily snowballed with that extra production to completely murder everyone. Settle the city up in the north and grab myself my oil well. Uh, five production tile in the snow, which is pretty good in getting a city online. Time to start doing a few inquisitions just to clear out the religious pressure in and around my cities a bit. I don't need it completely eradicated, but if I can just get a little bit of progress, I should be able to spread it much easier. Speaking of progress, let's grab ourselves another national park. Again, giving me plenty of extra amenities to keep my empire happy. And yet another national park. National parks, by the way, are a fantastic way to farm era score in the late game, because I'm pretty sure each national park you build gives you three era score. Just to give you an idea of how insanely huge my empire is right now, this is the list of cities. I right, keep in mind, normally I would win games with like maybe five to ten cities, and so the majority of my cities would have these little governor symbols. Just look at how few of my cities have governors, and I have every single governor unlocked in the game right now. Northern Battle Group is moving into position on Methane, and the really, really cool thing about the Observation Balloon is it actually lets you shoot over obstacles like hills, forests, and even mountains, so... Uh, it's going to be extremely helpful and take it out methane. I am going to let my units recover for a turn, at least some of them. Like, for example, this infantry down here. They're a little bit hurt, so I need a little bit more health on them. And this cavalry is kind of a bit too weak to really be used for anything except for uh, combat against other units. The southern battle group, on the other hand, is going to steam straight towards... Uh, Niani, I think it is, or what's their capital called? I forget what it's called. Nubia. Nubia. I'm going to go straight towards Nubia because uh, I don't want to delay this war down here in the south. And really, I should have had more military engineers to try and help me build my railroads because 
Right now, my units are not keeping up. Just to put the amount of footage in perspective to get this much like actual usable video in the late game, I've been recording for an hour. And so I want you to compare that hour of recording with how much footage of me actually talking there is. Because a lot of what I do is I just go around, I click on cities and make sure they do something, but that's not really super useful for what you guys want to know. Pretty much all of my cities are focused on gold production or amenities. That's so I have a large enough gold income to support my army. I have a couple of cities working on building me a uh, air force, but adding more cities to that doesn't really speed it up. Like take the city of Hamilton, for example. If I tried to build an air force in here, it would take 18 turns, which is pretty slow. I could build an air force in my capital much faster than that by just spamming out a few biplanes. I've also been working on slowly but surely clearing out the Buddhism from the northern half of my empire. And you can see from the color change, there's not a whole lot of it left. There's only really four cities that are holding on to it. These other ones are city states that should fall uh, relatively quickly once I can start getting some of these cities flipped as well. I think this is the turn that Methane will fall. I want to use... Uh, as little artillery shots as possible this turn. And that's mainly so that I can actually take the time to upgrade my other artillery with, for example, shells. And getting shells will mean that enemy cities will fall even faster. So Dynga will be an easy kill, thanks, thankfully because it has no walls. So we'll go ahead and keep that city. And uh, life is going to be pretty hard getting through this gap to their capital, but I think we'll be able to do it. I do have military engineers on route to build some extra railroads and I'll probably need to move more over there. Let's see if we can't get this city converted and there we have it and we'll be able to use this as another place to get some more inquisitors to keep spreading my religion. Just converted the holy city of Buddhism, picking up an extra four era score, and that'll also start to push out pressure over here. Nice one, just grabbed Albert Einstein who's going to give my universities plus four sides. Not super amazing, but it is a reasonable bonus to my science output, boosting me from 500 all the way up to 547.5. Time for Pydna to follow the same fate as the rest of the Macedonian cities. Now we're moving in on the Nubian capital that's somewhere in here. Wait, isn't it in, in here somewhere? Oh, it must be doing a really good job of hiding. I can even use my battleships to assist here, although they're not super strong right now, but they will get stronger over time, especially if I combine them together into fleets. It only took about 10 health off of the city's fortifications, but that's to be expected considering they have Renaissance walls in here. All right, let's go ahead and hammer Pydna with our infantry. These guys can attack twice, which uh, is an incredibly powerful ability. And I think we're more or less done with the war against uh, Alexander and we can start going to war with Korea. So let's go ahead and declare the Golden Age War with Korea since that'll give us a 75% reduction in the grievances we generate against them. And we can start making our way over to their capital. Now they are significantly tougher because of their high tech level, but I should still be able to break them relatively easily, especially once the Southern Battle Group is done taking over Nubia and I can shift them off to the front line in the north. Let's get the Southern Battle Group into position with railroads. And the railroads are gonna be helpful because it'll allow them to reinforce the north quickly which is why I'm gonna take the time to uh, come in here and actually start building a railroad up this way and that'll again just allow me to get those troops back up to the north much faster than otherwise would be possible anyway time for Napata to burn haha -ha. do you guys get the Napata joke I hope you guys do <laughs> otherwise it's gonna be me giggling away to myself at my own cleverness which uh, you know I'm not that clever. All right, so we captured the city. I really am just dominating here. And it looks like their capital is over here. Lovely, we completed our very first biplane and we can start rebasing them towards the front line with the Koreans. Yangshang will be the first city of the Koreans that I work on destroying. And it'll probably take two turns per city for the Koreans. But if I can get some support from my infantry like this, then it'll go nice and quick. Oof, they have modern armor. That's really bad. I'm going to lose some units here. Although actually it's only a regular modern armor. It's not a core or an army, so that shouldn't be too scary. Second turn of killing Yangshan. And actually this is going to go pretty well because they have a modern armor inside that city. 
which is going to represent me killing a significant chunk of the Korean military by virtue of just killing this city. Oh my god, this is music to my ears. They don't even have walls in Moreau, so this will be pretty much an instantaneous uh, city capture this turn. One shot, two shots, finish with the tank. Now we have their capital. And in order to win the game, we just have to take the city of Gyeongju. I'm going to do a listening post in this city so that I get a little bit more combat strength when I'm fighting the Koreans. And it looks like they're trying to spam out cultists, so I'm going to have to try and deal with those as well. I have this cavalry running around to the north as well. Since he has the pillage only costs one movement, I can run in and pillage things really, really quickly. He's actually generating me a ton of gold. I'm not even sure if my biplanes are going to make it to the front line fast enough to be useful, but a couple of more turns of relocation and they'll be there. Kerma is also relatively undefended and I have a destroyer and a battleship in the area. It's another free city capture. I think I'm just going to grab all of the Nubian cities to clear them up so that it's easy enough to head back up towards Korea. Although that said, at this point, I'm not in fear of losing these cities as long as I put a governor in Moreau. So I think I can start moving my artillery back to the north. Beautiful, we've just unlocked nuclear fission, which is gonna allow us to do the Manhattan Project. Let's get the Manhattan Project started in our capital. It will take nine turns, which I might even have won the game by the time I unlock nukes. It's important to remember that in order to actually drop the nukes, you do need bombers, so we'll get to work on those right now. Our first biplane has reached the front line and we'll be able to start using him to fight next turn. My artillery are in position on Ganju. Let's go ahead and make sure that we get rid of any excess units and get these guys promoted because I don't want to have to deal with any of this nonsense. Like I said, we've completed our objective down to the south so we can quickly relocate our artillery all the way to the north thanks to this railroad that I pre-built. I used to think railroads were kind of useless, but having played a little bit more around with them, I, I do think they have a place and, and a strategic use in speeding up how quickly you can win a game. The world enters the modern era. Space race isn't super important to us, but in terms of our golden age dedication, I don't actually need two arms anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and just pick up Heartbeat of Steam for that extra little bit of science adjacency as production. One of the best uses of biplanes is actually scouting information. This biplane can see four tiles away in every direction, regardless of the terrain. So they're super useful for actually being able to see what kind of terrain you're coming up against and whether or not there's any units you can go around. But I think we've held off on killing Ganju long enough. Let's go ahead and get that underway. And the city has essentially fallen already. Just need to get a tank over there with enough movement to take it out. Modern armor, gone. One bombard of the city. Grab the city. Move on up in position for Jinju. Hit the city once. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm going to win this game before I ever get to use nukes. There's seven turns left on the Manhattan Project. And it actually takes a few turns to build a nuke. Not to mention the fact that I'll need a bomber as well. Thankfully though, I do have enough gold to just go ahead and buy a bomber that I'll be able to use to drop the nukes. All right, we've bombarded Jinju. Let's go ahead and attack it head on with our tanks. Ooh, almost a kill. If I had one more tank in range, Oh, if I had used my biplane, I probably could have done it, but I guess it just doesn't have the range until I upgrade it into a fighter. Yeah, I can't get infantry over there. Oh well, we'll grab that next turn. I may as well head towards thermonuclear devices, even if I probably won't get to use them. Just an awful lot of this going on. Me going around between cities, looking for something reasonable to build, basically clicking on the first reasonable decision I see, and then moving on to the next city. Click, 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 click. So, I mean, if you're wondering why the videos are so short, it's because I cut all that out. In fact, just to put this video in even more perspective, I'm already a half hour or maybe even more. I'm, maybe I'm close to like 40 or 50 minutes into uh, the second half of this recording. And uh, there's probably only like a few minutes of viable footage. And just the way the cookie crumbles, there's a lot to take care of in the early game. But in the sort of later half of the game, a lot of it is just kind of tedious. I, I don't want to say tedious. Tedious is maybe the wrong word, but just micromanagement, right? You've got to go through. You've got to like refresh your trade routes. You've got to do all this sort of thing. Great people spawn. You've got to create their great works. Like I already have a decent amount of great works. Um, I just have like a ridiculous number of slots. So it doesn't look like I have that many. But yeah, it's just, you know, micromanagement, all that sort of stuff. And this is actually really sort of the time of the game where a player needs to, to manage themselves. You need to be your own empire. You need to look after yourself because 
you need to be sort of you, you don't have to make every decision optimally just kick back take a deep breath and just make like really quick easy decisions in your empire don't him and haw about every single micromanagement decision kind of estimate it's like okay i've got about maybe 10 turns left in this game so any decision that isn't going to come to fruition in about 10 turns doesn't matter to me right so like, i can just pick anything like for example this city right here i don't care what the city does because i've essentially won the game so i just go down to the bottom and i say hey you know click on whatever project i want you to do and this is actually a really 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 important part of, uh, of of how you play as a player how you get better at the game is just getting through the turns in the late well, game and it's true of all 4X games, especially where you're going for some sort of war or domination focus. You're just going to have so many cities that you'll have so many decisions and that very few of them are going to matter on the outcome of the game because the vast majority of decisions that mattered you made in the early game, which is perfectly fine. It's a reasonable thing because, you know, the decisions now, they're only going to matter for 10 turns, so they're not going to have a huge impact on the outcome, right? So that seems like that's a reasonable thing. It's, in fact, a, probably a good thing. All right, so we just bombarded Jinju. We can grab the city. And now this is the final city that we need to capture, Gyeongju. Let's move in to surround the city and start bringing forward our artillery. I think I am going to have to uh, have to give you guys the old tease and not use nukes this game because I'm just about finished, which is, is what, what should really happen, right? I, I should finish really, really quickly because I'm snowballing. I'm snowballing out of control. I shouldn't. I should be able to do this, right? So I think it's pretty reasonable that I actually won the game before I ever got to use nukes. And this often happens to me in my domination games. I'm kind of tempted maybe to do an even bigger map so I have more time uh, to actually get to use things like nukes. Because this happens to me even when I play on a six player map. This is an eight player map and, and it still happened to me. So, you know, I think there is something there about maybe playing on a bigger map. What I love about bombers is just how far you can rebase them. Like this guy can fly all the way over to Autogust in a single turn. And then I'll be able to leapfrog him over to Ganju and start bombing Korea's capital. So this is the thing about Korea. Um, they have an amazing science game, but they often fail to build a military because the cost of their military outscales their production. They just get so much science that their units become so expensive that they end up with a really, really small army of incredibly powerful units like modern armies. And so if you can quickly overwhelm them with, again, overwhelming force, then there's not really a huge amount they can do to actually stop you. And that's kind of like my go-to strategy for dealing with Korea is just hitting them with everything that I've got so quickly that their head spins essentially. But sure, let's go ahead and uh, this is this is why you make fighters, by the way. If you've got a really, really strong unit that you can't deal with, fighters let you do damage to them for free and fighters are very, very high combat strength. So they do really, really good damage to units like this. But let's go ahead and start sieging down the capital. I will, of course, be picking up promotions where I can because I need heals and stuff like that. But uh, their capital is really highly defended. So despite me having hit this with like four or five artillery, I've only taken down like, uh, what is it, like a quarter of the city's fortifications? The thing is, though, a city's fortification health falls faster the less of it it has. Like, again, I'm just, I'm going through my cities. I have a hotkey that I hit that like scrolls through my cities and I just click on whatever the first decision that makes sense is and then go back to managing my army until I have no more cities to manage. It really is the only way to do things when you're playing a game with this many cities. It just becomes unmanageable. It, like no person can pay that much attention to so many cities. You have to just, you just have to make, you know, quick and easy decisions to get through it, which is probably a bit of a like metaphor for real life. It's like if you're managing a population of a million people, it's probably easier to like manage them in, in some level of detail. But if, if you're trying to manage like a billion people, Man, that's got to be tough to try and make decisions for that because there's only so many things you can pay attention to. There's scandals happening in every city. There's like new technologies, new organizations. Everyone wants to talk to you because you're the dude who's in power. It's like, man, it sounds like a nightmare to try and like look after a, an entire, what is essentially a civilization. Oh my God, they killed my Magnus. 
My trade routes in my capital are only worth three food now. I, I did have trade routes up to five food and five production to my capital thanks to all the districts I built in here. And I'm still five turns away from getting the goddamn Manhattan Project. Just to add insult to injury for the AI, they managed to fail another emergency against me. And I have access to jet fighters and missile cruisers who will... Uh, not be super useful, but I will still do the upgrades because, you know, I like having strong units and highly leveled units uh, kind of please me. One fun thing you can do with bombers, by the way, is you can actually pillage enemy districts. This is something people overlook with bombers in the late game if you're against someone. Um, you can use bombers to harass their economy. Right, let's go ahead and just get a murder in on Gyeongju. All of my artillery are in range. The city should fall much quicker than it did last turn because its defenses are lower and more of my artillery are in position to fight. Let's get rid of this tank too. Don't want to deal with that nonsense. And I think we're one turn away from winning. Yeah, look at that. City's about to fall. I, of course, uh, the, what you call it, the last Malian city uh, just flipped to me right here. So they're out of the picture. I swear to God, every single turn, like eight cities, like ask me, for orders and like no matter how many things i queue up in them it's the same thing every single turn it's like just the sheer number of demands for orders i'm being given right now Ooh, can we get the kill here maybe infantry uh i had enough moves all right brilliant so we actually won this turn that's it we won Though it's over we didn't even get to use nukes we didn't even get to use nukes but we do get to look at our graphs and goddamn, look at those buildings constructed. I definitely start off well behind the AI, but as time goes on and I capture more cities, the number of buildings I build goes exponential. And the same can be said for my culture. Like if you look down here, my cult I'm pretty much behind on culture for like most of the game that matters and only really in the mid game do I start pulling ahead? It's the same again for science. I'm mostly behind, but then slowly right into the late game, I start beating out Korea. I want to actually see how many cities that I captured. Yep, look at that. Look at the number of cities. It's capture, 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 capture. I think this was the initial war with the Cree, then the Khmer War, then the Canada War. And then the final war. So you can see how you snowball. It starts off out rough. You've got a long time before you can capture anything. You capture a few cities. You snowball. There's a bit less time until your next war. And then your next war. Take a look at the number of combats too. I was actually pretty far. But I'm surprised by how many combats the AIs participate in. Because I was at war for what feels like the majority of that game. And I still was only just barely the person who had the most combat. I definitely killed the most units. But even so, like... Jesus, Alexander, he was killing units all the way up until I basically finished him around about here. Now, this is the one graph that I like to be on the bottom of the units lost. Look at that. But this is my favorite graph in the entire game. Total religions founded. Look at these religions. My God. Now, Khmer got off to a good start with that first religion that they founded, but they really floundered and were never able to manage to capture a set, another religion. You know what I'm saying? I was pretty late to getting my second religion, so it's a bit more understandable that I didn't found a second religion, but that's just the way the cookie crumbles. Welcome to screenshot mode. This is a mode made available by Secretact's simple UI adjustments. It allows you to remove basically the entire UI and view your empire from any angle that you like. From humble beginnings in Rome all the way over here, we have captured this entire world, essentially. Now, I mean, I guess I could technically go through and capture all these cities, but why would I? I already got my victory screen. I've essentially won, and uh, I'm unstoppable. And there's no real point to continue to play this game. So, I hope you guys enjoyed, uh, well, this particular game of Civilization VI. Hope you guys enjoyed this run. If you have suggestions for what you'd like to see in my next run, let me know. I love you all very much, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.